firefighters decided to lie on an official report and said they searched for two black children and never did, never did. But the firefighters, they weren't fired for manipulating an official document, lying about their duty and oath to protect and rescue. Let's put up the picture of the family, okay? You see the two black children, they're dead, they're dead. The firefighters, two of them lied. On the same report and said, "Oh, we did everything we could. We went aside, we did a sweep of the apartment, they did nothing, not a damn thing. Guess what? They are being protected, but I'm going to expose every single one of them. Keep that picture up. You're looking at Crystal Cooper, she's in the center. She's grieving the loss of her two sons, Zierra Mitchell and Lamar Mitchell, 12 and nine respectively. Dead. A Michigan mother is now demanding answers and accountability. After two firefighters gave an all clear, now that's important to note. All clear means nobody else should come here to help. They gave an all clear during a house fire that left both of her sons dead. Flint is where this happened. Flint. Fire Chief Raymond Barton found that Sergeant Daniel Snagoki and Michael Zlotek completed false reports about what occurred on that Memorial Day weekend fire. He said it, he said, yeah, these guys lied, he did, he did something else. They claimed to have searched for the children on the second floor, where the bodies of both of them, the 12 year old and nine year old were discovered by two other firefighters six minutes later. Now, keep in mind the variable so far. The fire chief says, yeah, they lied on an official report. What is that? That's violation of oath of office. That is a crime, that's a criminal act. You can actually be charged with a felony. Two other firefighters ended up finding the dead bodies a crucial six minutes afterwards, after those firefighters initial ones lied, there's more. The chief recommended that the two lying firefighters who happen to be white be fired. He said they gotta go. But one was allowed to resign because somebody decided to override the chief. And the other was suspended for two weeks and received additional search and rescue training before returning to the job because somebody decided to override that decision by the chief as well. Now the person who decided to override this wanted to remain top secret. But I got the goods and we're gonna expose the individual who did it. There's more. Let's put up a picture of Miss Crystal Cooper who was speaking at the Flint City Council meeting. This was on October 19th, she was speaking. Because she said there's something foul here. The child's mother, both of the children's mother, Crystal Cooper took her fight of justice to the Flint City Council. Cooper said she wants the firefighters who neglected to search for her sons to face criminal charges. And that is exactly what we want as well. They were later carried out of the home by two black firefighters who took the time to actually do a search. Both of the children died days later after being airlifted to Detroit Children's Hospital. They committed a crime for them to say they searched the house and they really didn't search the house. For them to be suspended with pay, they weren't dealt with properly according to the mother when she addressed city council. Ms. Cooper, I agree with you 100%. Zaire and Lamar were in the home when the fire started on May 28th. I'm taking you back to the historical element. The boys were spending the weekend with their father. A witness reported seeing smoke billowing from the side of the residential structure. And there was possible entrapment according to a 911 audio obtained by ABC 12. According to accounts at the city council meeting, someone reportedly walked into the fire station where the smoke from the house could be seen about 200 feet away, firefighters made the first call. 
So the two firefighters, Snagoki and Zlotek, were the first ones to respond. When they responded, what did they do? They decided to call off any other rescue efforts. They literally told people, we do not need any additional help. We have swept this place, it is clean, everybody can move on with their lives. That's what they did, that's extreme. After performing the initial sweep of the home, they wrote in their reports that they entered the doorway of the bedroom where the children were found and used a thermal imaging camera to scan the room and the results were negative. However, the firefighter whose team found the children after moving an air conditioning vent told the chief there was no way possible. They entered the bedroom where the victims were found and missed them. No way possible that happened. The first child was found to the immediate left of the entrance of the room and the other one was on the bed. In other words, if the firefighters would have simply walked into the room, if they would have simply walked into the room, they would have found them. Those children would possibly be alive right now, today. They did not get fired, they did not get charged and one is still working. Barton wrote in the department's final investigative report that both of these firefighters, and I quote, knowingly made false reports in their incident write ups. Just hard stop there. Knowingly made false reports in their investigative write up. Felony. That's a felony charge. What else are we talking about at this point? Knowingly made false statements on an actual investigative document, violation of oath of office, you go to jail. They didn't, their actions or inactions arise to disobedience according to FFD rules and regulations. And as such, their actions have impeded, injured and hindered the progress, welfare, efficiency and good name of the department. Now remember, this is the chief. The chief is giving you all the goods you need to effect an arrest. The chief of the fire department is not able to arrest. They can investigate, they can make a decision, make a conclusion, they can forward it even to a prosecutor, but he cannot arrest. So he said everything on the record to make sure everybody was very clear about what he believed happened here. Who's protecting him? Put up his picture. You see this fellow? He's the mayor. Sheldon Neely is the one protecting them. And I don't give a damn what y'all for say. You're the one who decided to override the decision because based on your own city charter, you're the only one that can override a decision by the city manager. Now you can play like what boo boo the fool if you want to. Some Flint council members and community members also believe that the mayor that you're looking at, Sheldon Neely, overrode the chief's recommendation to terminate the firefighters and that he has also conspired with the city attorney to keep his involvement secret. There's another man named Eric Mays, a city councilman who has called out the mayor specifically. Now, Eric Mays, he's not one to toy with, he's a real one. Some people do not like his style, I happen to love it. Council members drilled Flint Human Resources Director Eddie Smith about why the city did not terminate the firefighters. What did Smith say? Smith told the council that the final decision was made before the personnel files made it to his desk. What? The final decision was made before the personnel files hit his desk. Who has the power to do that? Only the mayor does, nobody else, there's more. Councilman Eric Mays, the man you just saw, said the mayor was the only one who could have given the order. Community activist author Woodson claims the mayor tried to keep the incident under wraps until after the election season. Cooper said an attorney she hired to help with the incident, a supporter of the mayor, asked her to do the same thing. She hires counsel. 
to represent the best interest for her deceased children and getting justice for their deaths. The counsel, the attorney who's a supporter of the mayor says, let's just play politics right now. Let's do what the mayor is suggesting through his actions. Now I bring up Eric Mays, the city councilman, because I know he will see this segment. Uh, Dear brother, you have fought vigorously for your community. You have got in the face literally of constituents. Hell, they even locked you up a few times. These children should be alive today. Your mayor's already gone, he'll sell out, it's no hope for him. Eric. Mays is the same man who did this at one council meeting a few years ago. Here it is. I want this sent to the police. You ain't cracking me across my head. Well, you ain't gonna threat nobody in no public meeting because your man don't want to answer an easy question. I'm gonna make a promise to you. You're not gonna interrupt this meeting threatening no elected official with no physical violence. I don't care what kind of suit you wear. Councilman Mays. I don't Councilman care what Mays. kind of suit you wear. You way out of order. You and to you're calm making down. your client look bad. Okay. I need that same spirit, Councilman, as you continue to advocate for this family and expose the corruption that you know has already taken place. While some may disagree with your style, brother, I actually appreciate the fact you're not afraid to confront power, check it when necessary. Mr. Neely said it would be political suicide if he let out that two young black boys were in this house and it was two white firefighters that gave an all clear. And those young boys were in that house for six minutes. Six minutes, Woodson said. Councilwoman Tanya Burns claims, and I quote, the mayor and his people went after the boy's family on social media because the home did not have smoke detectors. Think about this. Instead of holding the public officials, the firefighters accountable, they decided to protect them and go after the grieving family because there was no operating fire detector. Flint council members have now voted unanimously to launch an independent investigation into the fire and the lack of disciplinary actions against these firefighters. There you have it. All right, we're gonna continue to follow the story, bring you updates as they come. Trey, what are your thoughts here? I mean, I'm not gonna make fun of this or anything. You know, those two little boys are right around the same age as my two sons. I can't imagine anything worse or more tragic. It's very sad, I guess. The main thing that I thought when reading about this was like, oh man, not the fire department too now. Yeah. You know, like it's always, yep. it's always something new with a different police department every week. And you sort of like, I know they have a big like rivalry, but the cops and the firefighters are on two sides of the same coin. They both work for the city, serve the public. And you have not typically seen many songs like F the fire department, or if you saw a fire department hat or a bumper sticker, on, you wouldn't think to yourself, well, I've got to avoid that guy at a party. You know what I mean? Like we haven't had the same sort of association with the fire department and in seeing this, I was like, please don't let that start happening too. Like I can't can't have, you know, just the general public trust in the institution of the, you know, public fire department also start to erode in the uh, current society that we live in. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, I hope this is just an isolated incident because I ain't trying to see the fire department go the way of the of the cops. Well, we'll <laughs> you know, see. I We've had not. multiple stories here where fire department officials were involved in just as much egregious activity as some police officers. Definitely not as extreme as far as numbers, but it exists. There's a coalition there of some sort. 